I'm now joined by Matthew Scullion, founder and CEO at Matillion, along with James Rowlandson, cloud architect at LSEG. Gentlemen, such a pleasure to have you on the program today. Thank you, sir. Nice to be back, James. Thanks for joining us as no, well. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Matthew, again, great to have you back on the program. Last year, we discussed the expected impact Gen AI would have across the marketplace. A year later, it's safe to say this technology is here to stay. From your seat as CEO, what are you seeing and how are you and the team implementing this technology in order to give your customers, excuse me, the edge? Yeah, gosh, what a year, right? I mean, we were sat here, I was going to say together, we were together because we were at Snowflake Summit, but a different city, of course. We were in Las Vegas. We were in Great Las Vegas, you, behaving ourselves. <laughs> um, uh, but so much has happened in that year. I think last year, in my mind, there was an anticipation. Uh, we all thought that this was going to be important. We were all starting to talk about generative AI and its potential impacts on our businesses. I think what we're seeing is a movement from, you know, in some cases, ignorance and denial, is this going to be the next thing? Or in some cases, curiosity and urgency to do something. So this year, action and people looking for ways to bend generative AI to their will and to improve their businesses with it. So really moving up that adoption curve to the action stage. And we at are certainly trying to mark that. And so we've been super busy imbuing our platform, the Data Productivity Cloud, with generative AI capabilities. Some of that is making what we've always done better with generative AI. And so we've got a co-pilot now. We've got documentation that does itself automatically because the large language model builds it for us. But what we're really excited about is bringing what Matillion's always done, this ability to compose pipelines really quickly, bringing that capability to generative AI. And so very excitingly here, um, uh, at the summit, we've launched uh, native support in data productivity cloud for Cortex. And so you can now call all five of the, uh, the key uh, functions of Cortex inside of a Matillion pipeline. And for the customer, that just means they can access Cortex much more quickly and easily, we hope, as part of their core pipelines and use that functionality. We're also really excited to launch support for Snowpark Container Services, which I think really simplifies the governance, security, and compliance story for our customers. It unlocks really unlimited scalability and performance, and it allows those advanced generative AI customers to do things like bring along their own foundational models into pipelines. So yeah, overall, from uh, a curiosity to action in the last 12 months. It's been quite the journey. Thank you for that perspective, Matthew, and great to be joined by a customer in yours in the London Stock Exchange. James, financial data is highly regulated and privacy is of the utmost concern. How does the AI Data Cloud in partnership with Matillion take that concern off the, off the table and out of the equation for you? Some of the features of the new Data Productivity Cloud I think will be really useful for us going forwards. Um, we use Matillion for all our regulated workload. So we have very complex business logic that um, Matillion supports that has multiple steps and very complex, uh, multiple steps to be processed. And I think some of the Data Productivity Cloud features will allow yeah, that's to enhance what we do already. Um, and along with some of the new features that been announced with Snowflake today, will help us really get control of the governance and lineage and all that. So really excited about the stuff to come. An exciting next chapter indeed. The, the work that James's team does using Snowflake and Matillion, it never fails to blow me away, to be honest. I mean, you're quite a small team, right? How many, how many people are using? So we have about, just over about 20 developers, but we support let's say multiple asset classes, so equities, FX, and that's growing as, uh, as time goes on. Um, and we're loading a large amount of data. We're doing probably any, anywhere between sort of 10 and 15 billion rows of data per day. Over the next four years, that will grow to about 80 billion per day. Wow. Um, and Matillion, we have about 600, let's say, pipelines we run per day that are critical, not, not just for like, the business, but also for regulatory compliance. Um, and Matillion allows us to, let's say, do this in a simple manner. Um, so we can do this, we can have the same logic in one flow, but rerun it for multiple venues. So we only have to maintain the business logic once. 
I, I, it picks up a little bit on Sridhar's keynote from yesterday, right. Ryan. Uh, you know, he was talking about that enterprise simplicity and also the trust and security and and uh, that, that single platform. And, and for me, London Stock Exchange Group is such a wonderful example of that. I mean, basically, the work that they do underpins the trust in the right. London capital markets, like one of the biggest capital markets in the world. Uh, uh, you know, the, every transaction gets sent out to regulators via Snowflake and Matillion, and it's James's team doing that. So for me, it's just a brilliant encapsulation of that um, regulated trust that the thrust of your question talked to. Great to hear. Matthew, I'd like to get slightly personal with you, if you don't mind, because I love getting the opportunity to sit down with founders. What were your founding principles at Matillion, and how do these values serve as the foundation for how you lead today? Yeah, it's a great question. Thank you. And, and uh, yeah, really nice to have a question that's not just straight about, you know, use cases and features. We've gotten to know each other quite we well have. over the years. Yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah. So um, when we founded Matillion, it was always on the observation uh, that data productivity, we felt, needed to be wildly increased. And so we actually started off as a company in our very early days, a little bit like our customers are today, like James's team we used to build data warehouses in the cloud. And we, we just felt we couldn't go fast enough. I'm yet to meet a business executive that has got all the data they need, uh, or in fact, even begun to get all the generative AI pipelines that they need. And when you drill into the reason why, it's the data engineering that's the choke point. 70% of the work in any data project is data engineering, and the world just doesn't have enough data engineers. The only way to solve the problem is to make data engineers like James's team wildly more productive, you know, able to achieve more in the same working day, and or to get more players on the pitch by simplifying or changing the skills profile required by making building data pipelines like a composable activity, right? And that was super relevant when we launched our platform back in 2015, I think. Um, and I think it's just become maybe even more relevant again today. The urgency around generative AI is perhaps an order of magnitude greater than even if it was around data because that technology is so powerful that companies that don't learn to implement it and bend it to their will will uh, will be outcompeted by customers that that um, that do learn to, to do that and so if your productivity around building AI pipelines isn't high then that's going to hold you back so your question was, uh, how is that original vision informing us now? Correct. Bringing that same view of wildly increasing the productivities of organizations, of teams, of individuals, and of changing the skills profile required to build AI pipelines, you know, doing that in a way where we can uh, make building a pipeline, getting the data from the right place, getting it organized, you know, chunking it, vectorizing it, feeding it into the LLM, making that a visual and composable task that can be done quickly and then maintained in a sophisticated organization like London Stock Exchange. That was kind of our founding principles and it's very much the case now as well. So I hope that's where you were, you were going no, with the question. No, that was perfect. Ryan. Congratulations coming in on just about a decade for Matillion. Gentlemen, I want to bring it back here to Snowflake Summit. AI buzz is still all around us and I know we've covered part of this in this conversation, but what excites you most for what's next in regards to AI and the impact it'll have? James, if you'd like to lead us off. We're regulators, so we have to be careful what we do with the data and where the data goes. But I think the big advantage for us is, let's say, getting more productivity. So being able to get business insights without having to wait for te technical teams to write a query, produce the data, allowing, let's say, more human to data. So speeding up business insights is probably the main one for me. Is at the moment, it takes so long for someone to get that business insight. Um, so yeah, that's the bit I'm looking forward to. And Matthew, from your perspective. For me, it's such an exciting time. It kind of reminds me of being back in the middle of the last decade where cloud and data, it was a groundswell, a kind of once in a generation tectonic shift. Generative AI is bigger. Um, it's something that's going to change every aspect of how we work, live and play really quickly and it's happening now. Thing number one that excites me is just how leveraged this technology can be. I mean, we've already seen use cases where teams and organizations have 
become twice as productive in the line of business thing that they do or able to do it twice as quick or at half the cost already. And we're in like the first year of this stuff. The ability to transform businesses, incredible. And then at a personal level on behalf of Matillion, I'm really excited how working with Snowflake, we can make this a reality for organizations. We can make it so that with productivity, enterprises can really use generative AI technology on top of Snowflake with Cortex, um, with Snowflake Container Services, with Arctic, and using Matillion to do that at the speed of thought and with the skills that they've got already, making that a practical real life thing that comes true, that's really exciting. And working with organizations like London Stock Exchange and our joint thousands of other customers, it's just an exciting time to be here. Great to hear about the power of the broader AI, AI data cloud ecosystem. Gentlemen, such a pleasure being with both of you here today. Thanks, man. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green with Data Cloud Now. I'll see you soon.